Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. It turns out that Elspeth has been spotted in Throne of Eldraine. So without further ado, let's take a look at the artwork and talk about what's going on here. So as you can see, I mean, if you know who Elspeth is, you the people who are familiar with the whole lore of Theros and all that, they will recognize Elspeth very easily. I mean, who else could this be? Set against some sort of darkened night sky. I personally am pretty excited to see this. Now, if you're wondering specifically where this artwork comes from, what it's doing in Throne of Eldraine, this is on the back of tokens. So essentially, it's the Theros Beyond Death Heroes Persevere token. Not token, but uh, like add insert on the back of a token but for me taking a look at the artwork talking about the flavor behind it is a super exciting proposition it actually gets me it gets me more hyped for theros which we will be returning to the story of elspeth and what happened to her is both interesting and sad as well now i'm not going to be going in to the full lore of her here what i wanted to do is kind of dissect this artwork take a look at the different aspects of it and talk about the things that are relevant specifically to this piece of artwork. And one of those things is the godsend. In fact, the godsend is, is the most important part of all of this. It factors into not only her mask, but if you actually take a look at her armor, you will see there is a rent in the armor, or if you want a hole in the armor, if you don't know what a rent, what, what rent means anyways. There is a hole in the breastplate of her armor. How did that happen? What is with the mask she's holding? What, what exactly is going on here? And why is it called Theros Beyond Death? Well, it looks like this is going to be focusing on the story of Elspeth Tyrael specifically, which has me hyped because Elspeth is a cool character who actually goes further back in magic history that you, than you would think. Now, in terms of the godsend, which is something we're definitely going to focus on here, originally, how Elspeth came into possession of the godsend is originally one of the gods of Theros, specifically Perforos, he wanted to wage war against another god, Heliod. Heliod is the white god, the like the lord god who's basically like king of the gods in charge of everything sort of thing. So Perforos wanted to raise up against him. To that end, he crafted the Sword of Chaos, which is what would become the godsend. So this is a sword crafted by a god, which was capable of damaging the substance of Nyx. Now Nyx is the world, the world of the gods. It's where the gods reside. And you will notice on cards like Starfield Mystic from 2020, actually, they've got that Nixian kind of feel to it. Basically, how the Nyx concept works is you would see it with enchantment creatures. You would see it with the gods. Anywhere where shadows would normally fall, any area that would be shadowed is instead shown as like a starry night sky, as if these creatures, these gods are made up of the night sky itself. Now, most things can't harm this god stuff, this creation of the gods and what they are made of. Normally, there's not much that can damage it. But Perforo specifically crafted a sword of chaos, which was capable of damaging the substance. Heliod and Perforos actually got into a big battle. It ended up rending the heavens asunder. It damaged Nyx and actually opened up the celestial resting place of Polychronos, the world eater. So this is a legendary Hydra that normally lived in the realm of the gods, but actually because of the rent in the heavens, again, there's that word rent, because of that rended hole open, in the rended hole in the god stuff, in the heavens, Polychronos fell to earth where he was later on sealed. But anyways, that's not, uh, that's not the only thing that fell. During this clash, Perforos had the Sword of Chaos knocked out of his hands. Now, this is the first time that Elspeth has ever planeswalked. Basically, up until this point, she was, she was living on a world that was terrorized 
by the Phyrexians. So, due to some circumstances that we'll get into in a proper lore video about her, she ends up under duress, planes walking away. That's usually what happens, is most people's sparks ignite under a feeling of duress. So in her early teens, this happens to her. She planes walks away. Whenever a planeswalker spark ignites, they have no real control over where they are going to end up. They are kind of like a leaf in a river. They just, they'll end up at whatever, whenever they hit the, the banks of the side, that's where they're, they're stuck to begin with. So Elspeth actually ends up coming to Theros as her first planeswalk, right? And at that exact moment, the Sword of Chaos is falling from the sky. So she actually reaches out, grabs the sword, and then without really fully understanding her powers, planes walks away. She comes back to Theros about 10 years later. This is the story of the godsend, right? This is how we get to the godsend. So she comes back to Theros 10 years later. She actually really liked Theros. She wanted it to be her home. She liked the idea of gods that would look over a world and kind of maintain balance and keep things safe because she had been in a world that was horrified, right? Just horrific and full of terror, I should say. So she comes back with this sword of chaos. Now when Heliod sees her with this sword at first, He's enraged, right? He thinks like, wait a minute, what, what, what are you here like as an agent of Perforos? Are you here to try and dethrone me? Is this a continuation of that conflict from 10 years ago? So he basically at first is hostile to her and then he realizes she might actually be the champion of the sun. So to that end, he actually takes the sword from her and he reforges it into the God Scent, which is a spear-shaped, it's a spear-shaped version of the same weapon. It still has the same two gems inset into the hilt. You will notice that if you look at old Elspeth artwork, you'll see that she has, uh, like she starts with the sword with these gems inset into them. Then it turns into this spear that she uses called the God Scent. So that's pretty cool. You have a sword forged by one God, then reforged into a spear by another god, she actually takes the spear and uses it to defeat Barkranos, the uh, the Hydra that we mentioned before that fell from the heavens. See, I didn't mention that for no reason. Now, basically, she continues onwards with the godsend spear. She defeats Xenagos. You all remember Xenagos was attempting to become one of the gods and actually succeeded in becoming one of the gods of Theros. The rest of the pantheon was not happy that he was there. So basically, she took him down with the godsend weapon. Now, what happened afterwards is just awful. Heliod, Heliod's a jerk. So Heliod turned around and said, like, I am supposed to be your god. I'm supposed to be above you. But because Elspeth is a planeswalker and had been to places that Heliod could never tread to, because even though he was a god, in some ways, Elspeth was more powerful than him. Well, Heliod had what some gods in some mythology have, a certain level of vanity, and he couldn't handle the concept of her knowing more than he did and having seen places that he didn't know. So he actually, instead of rewarding her for taking out Xenagos, he takes the sword spear and he stabs her in the chest with it. And the godsend actually shatters. So basically, he jams it into her and the godsend shatters into fragments. So when you look at the hole in the breastplate there, that's actually where the godsend was slid into her and exploded into chunks, right? So Delspeth, Delspeth, <laughs> that's apparently what you call the dying Elspeth. So Elspeth here is dying, but she's on the world of Theros, right? If she was, if she was up in the lands of Nyx, like if she was up in the god realm, things would have gone differently. So for example, Xenagos doesn't get to go to the underworld because of where he was slain. But she died in Theros proper. And as a result, she was consigned to the underworld, the, the lair of Erebos, basically. So the, there was, uh, the way that the underworld works in Theros is when you go to the underworld, you're stuck there. You're basically, you're sent in with like a clay mask and then if you're, if you're going to be returned to the world, your, your face is stripped from you, your memories are stripped from you, and you're given a golden mask. Now, Elspeth is no normal mortal. So what actually happened was 
the death mask that was forged for her was forged using the two jewels of the God sent. So if we take a look at the artwork here, we can see her death mask and you can see the two gems that are blazing with bright energy just emanating out of them. Those are the two chaos gems from the blade that was originally forged by Perforos. So you have her standing there with this determined, resolute look on her face. The mask is not encompassing the entirety of her face. You can see as well that she has retained her face and most likely all of her memories. She is probably going to re be returning with complete knowledge of what happened to her. So I imagine that this means the storyline of Theros is going to be one of redemption and vengeance. Elspeth is going to return to the lands of Theros, walk amongst them, and eventually, I imagine, destroy Heliod, or Heliod, however you want to pronounce it, with the possibility of actually ascending to the Pantheon. Xenagos already illustrated that people can ascend their way to the Pantheon, and if Heliod gets destroyed, Theros is going to need a new white-aligned god, and Elspeth would actually fit the bill perfectly for that. She loves Theros, she likes the idea of there being a world where there's order and protection, so what happened with the Phyrexians doesn't happen to her. She has every reason to be incredibly angry with Heliod. Also, she is in possession of the jewels that are powerful enough to destroy the fabric of Nyx. So essentially, when we look at this, all the tools that are needed for her to ascend to godhood and cast Heliod down into destruction are there. We could be looking at that. Now behind her, we've got the starry, we've got a starry sky, and you've got a temple with these stairs with mist kind of flowing down them. So I don't know if this is supposed to be set in like the physical world of Theros, or if this is actually a part where um, Elspeth has like ascended into Nyx. I'm not sure if she's in Nyx or regular Theros when I look at this artwork. It does have kind of an otherworldly feel to it. So she might be at Nyx. She might be at the edge of the world instead. I'm curious to see whether this mask that she's holding is actually somewhat broken. You know, because when you look at it, you could go, okay, it might have been designed this way originally, or it might be a scenario where she actually had the mask fractured. It's not It's not 100% clear. I mean, when it comes to wizards and their lore and flavor and how they do everything, it's not always clear. But the reason that I, I think it's most likely a broken mask to a degree is because when they did the Mythic Edition of, um, when they did, when what was it the Mythic Edition for? Honestly, I can't remember which Mythic Edition it was for, but that doesn't matter. They did an Elspeth Knight Aaron, and she is literally holding a mask and that mask is entirely forged. So my guess is that this is later in her journey. She's made her way to Nyx. Part of the mass mask has been broken. Maybe this is her like triumphant moment actually where she has just defeated Heliod and during that struggle, part of the mask got cut. But I definitely like the way that the mask being destroyed in the fashion it is shows part of her face and the rest of it as the mask because when it comes to these returned they're required to wear these masks but for her it seems like all she has to do is she just she can choose to wear it or not wear it she's not really stuck wearing this sort of thing anyways i thought this was really cool when i saw the the artwork from the back of the token i'm like okay whatever i had planned today got pushed aside because i wanted to talk about this so big shout out to all my patrons and channel members thank you very much for supporting the work that i do it is much appreciated and to everyone, thanks for coming by, and I shall see you all tomorrow.